The 1968 Destroy All Monsters marks the first and only time Mothra is evil! No, 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 no. My favorite heroic poop-looking monster a villain? No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't want to believe it. But here she is, laying waste to civilization before my very eyes. No! I'll give her this, she knows how to make a fantastic entrance, bursting from out of a subway that's above ground. A subway that's above ground? How does that work? Mothra's not the only monster with a bug up her butt. In fact, all of Earth's monsters are laying waste to several cities across the planet. What's gotten into them? I mean, it is the year 1999. Ooh, so futuristic. By this point, we've been able to colonize on the moon, as well as round up all the kaiju monsters and more or less keep them caged on an island named Monsterland. And the monster inhabitants include Mothra, Godzilla, Manila, Rodan, Anguirus, Gorosaurus, Kumanga, Manda, Baragon, and Varan. Whoo, that's a lot of monsters! All the technology and plans seem to be in check, so what went wrong? Well, I'm glad you asked. In a plot straight out of Godzilla vs. Monster Zero, metallic slug women from outer space besiege the Monsterland base and take control of Earth's monsters and threaten to destroy the world if Earthlings do not surrender to them. These space women are even cheesier than the ones from Monster Zero, if you can believe that. I really can't decide, too, if I love the wardrobe or I don't. But the cape is pretty awesome, though. I'd definitely wear the Monster Zero outfit in public, but I'm not too sure about the slug women apparel. However, if I had a girlfriend that would wear that to a Halloween party and would accept me for my Monster Zero jumpsuit, then, then I probably would have to marry that girl on the spot. Yeah. Unfortunately, the metallic slug women aren't as interesting as the jumpsuit men, and for a movie with numerous monsters, it focuses too much on the human characters. The film's slightly disappointing in that regard. However, the monster action is fantastic! With the public interest weaning in kaiju films and the previous Godzilla movies a little lackluster, Toho went all out with the budget. The three juggernauts returned for this film, and it was planned to have this as the last Godzilla movie in the franchise, and they wanted to go out with a BOOM! Yeah, there's a lot of monster action. Godzilla, Rodan, and Amanda decimate Tokyo. Godzilla and Anguirus stomp the crap out of the military. And the final fight with King Ghidorah is one of the most memorable fights in the franchise. Remember, Ghidorah got his butt whooped by only Godzilla and Rodan before. Now he's taken on seven monsters. We get to witness all the different monster abilities. Mothra and Kumanga shoot their silky attacks. Gorosaurus does his legendary kangaroo kick. And even Manila strangles Ghidorah with one of his smoke rings. It's awesome, yes. It's not an exaggeration. They severely beat up on Ghidorah. It's almost funny how unfair seven against one is. And at some point, I actually feel bad for Ghidorah. But nothing beats this. One of the most comically memorable moments in all of cinema. No words can describe it. Just watch. <laughs> yes! Yes! Oh, man! And what makes it even funnier is that Ghidorah couldn't lift Godzilla from the ground, but Anguirus is hanging from his neck! And when he falls, he doesn't even move. <laughs> he doesn't move! <laughs> oh, don't worry, he's okay. Destroy All Monsters is just classic. The epitome of old-school kaiju monster brawling. There's just tons and tons of monster fighting and city destroying. You gotta love it! Yeah! Woo! Boom! Oh, this is insane! I'm 10 years old again!